Okay, well, good morning. On behalf of Dreambox Learning and our partners in Allegheny County Schools, I want to welcome you to today's Dreambox Learning workshop series titled How a Digital Math Program Fuels Student Growth. Here at Dreambox, we have a core value of constantly learning, and we're thankful for uh, that you've chosen to invest your time today in learning about best practices from your peers. It's one of the greatest assets that educators uh, have and share with each other. My name is Brian Harris, and I'm a member of our leadership team here at Dreambox. Um, before we start with introductions, I'll review a couple of housekeeping items that you're probably familiar with from the number of webinars you have joined in the last six months. Uh, all of our attendees are on mute, but can certainly leverage the Q&A or the chat box, which we'll monitor during the webinar. Our webinar is going to last no more than an hour, so we can be respectful of your time, and we'll be sure to reserve 10 to 15 minutes at the end for the panelists and the moderator to answer your questions. Uh, following this meeting, you're going to receive an email with a link to the recording and to a recent case study that uh, Allegheny County Schools uh, participated in with Dreambox. And you'll notice there's a QR code on your screen there um, with the PowerPoint. We'd love for you to engage with us on Twitter throughout the meeting or after the meeting. Um, you'll find a link to our handle at Dreambox, a link to Allegheny County Schools, and of course the, hash the hashtag that we're using today for DBL Workshop. So I'll start with introductions and then I'll, I'll pass to our moderator, Jennifer Hart. Um, located about two hours north of Charlotte, Allegheny County is a beautiful rural county in the Blue Ridge Mountains of northwestern North Carolina. The county has um, about 12,000 people and 1,400 K-12 students across four schools. The district is comprised of three K-8 through schools and one traditional high school. The district implemented multi-tiered systems of support, MTSS, in 2016 and embarked on a new personalized learning journey back in 2017. And with the leadership of, of Superintendent Chad Beasley, his leadership team, and the outstanding efforts of teachers, parents, uh, students, the district has recently achieved its highest graduation rate in four years at 94%. Uh, fun fact about Allegheny County is that Christmas trees are the largest agricultural crop in the county, and uh, certainly many school district families rely on um, rely on it uh, during the upcoming holiday season to support them uh, year-round. So we're excited to be joined today by uh, three ladies that you see there on your screen, four, including Jennifer, uh, who are leading the district through this digital transformation in math instruction that you'll hear about today that resulted in as much as 1.6 grade levels of growth in math in their first full year of implementation, which was this previous school year, which was unlike any other. Uh, I'll start with Melissa Fitzgerald, who is the Director of Student Support Services on the far right for Allegheny County. And as the director, she oversees the staff and programs for the district's exceptional children, MTSS, student services, English as a second language, migrant, and AIG. Uh, she served in this position for five years, and prior to that was the K-8 through Instructional Support Specialist for the district. In the middle, Leanne Dixon is the K-5 instructional coach and support specialist for Allegheny County and helps teachers implement district-directed curriculum, supports data analysis for individualized instruction, and works on many district-level teams such as MTSS, curriculum, and mental health. And prior to that role, she taught grades pre-K through three um, for the last 10 years. And Stacy Miller on the far left is the uh, new assistant principal at Sparta Elementary School, uh, the largest elementary school in the county. And before becoming an AP, she was an instructional coach at the middle school level and taught English at the secondary level. Uh, moderating today's discussion is Jennifer Hart. And Jennifer has been an educator for 17 years. Um, has a master's in education, and prior to joining Dreambox three years ago, she held uh, positions of curriculum coordinator, instructional facilitator, and was a math departmentalized educator in Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools uh, here in North Carolina, just about maybe 45 minutes or an hour away from Allegheny County, so in the same uh, region. So with that, I'll turn this panel discussion over to Jennifer. 
Thank you so much, Brian. And thank you all for joining us today. I see so many of my peeps in Georgia who have joined us and in North Carolina as well. And we just appreciate your time. I also wanted to just take a moment to address that these three ladies from Allegheny County are sitting in close proximity together, but I don't want you to worry. They've been working in the office together since May um, and they vacation together. They're close personal friends outside of this, but they have the cutest mask. Do you want to show us your mask really quickly? Aren't those fantastic? <laughs> I love them. Thank you so much. I didn't want you to worry about anybody's safety here. And we wanted you to know that we took all those things into consideration with um, this panel discussion. But our primary focus today is to hear your story on how a shift from incorporating a digital mass solution into your um, into your toolbox really is fueling student growth in your district. So if you were to look back two years ago at your math instruction in Allegheny County, what were some of the bright spots and what were some of the opportunities for improvement? If you don't mind, let's start with you, Melissa. Okay, um, good morning. So I would say uh, one of our bright spots would be the adoption of our math program, uh, core math program, Go Math. Um, we were in the beginning stages of implementation. Um, uh, teachers, staff were beginning to get a good understanding of how to use that program to guide instruction. Um, one of our other bright spots would be um, MTSS. We were in our, I guess, second year of implementation and uh, beginning stages of understanding the importance of not just educating the academic, but educating the whole child to include, you know, behavior, social, emotional uh, attendance, and the academic piece. Um, and that's been a real strength for us moving forward is that MTSS model. Mm -hmm. You guys want to add anything as far as positives? And I think um, with that new adoption for our K-5 Go Math, it also helped us to understand just how important the core instruction was. A lot of times, you know, we had that focus on kids who weren't making the progress and we didn't have that understanding of the importance of a good core. And, you know, when we didn't have consistent core, you know, some of that was the problem instead of it just being students not getting things. And so really that was a, another bright spot is because we had that good quality core, we really understood the value of it. Um, and I would go on to say that last summer, um, not this past summer, but the summer before, the three of us had spent an inordinate amount of time creating our intervention matrices mm -hmm. moving forward into last year so that we really had a specific plan and document and the tools and resources that we have here in our district in place going into last year so that our teachers had that those materials readily available to them. And so that sort of helped us with, with all of that moving into the full implementation of like NTSS for us. Mm -hmm. That vertical piece, yes. 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 And I would piggyback off of what Stacy just said. When we were in the beginning stages of uh, creating our intervention matrices, that's when we really saw a need for supplemental math support. We had all of these pieces uh, for reading, but our math was really, really lacking. Um, so we wanted, we were looking for something that wasn't a separate piece of our core math, but one that would align with our Go Math. Uh, so that was definitely a need. Um, one of the other big pieces was the need for improved focus on data, uh, looking at that data to inform instruction, using our, our math data to help guide teachers. And we wanted to look at being um, proactive, not, not reactive, looking at that data and, and using it for instruction. That's really, really great to hear how you just developed everything and looked eternally and then looked to see what gaps and pieces were missing. But if you were to look back two years ago at your math instruction in Allegheny County, um, what were you identifying as gaps? So within MTSS, you identified a gap and how you were differentiating that instruction for tier two and tier three students. And your core curriculum, you know, met the need for your tier one students but it left you with kind of that imbalance, that gap. So in your instructional strategy, can you expand on that a little bit and tell us 
what you did and what that looked like. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, so I think that what we the first step with the, that we really looked at is how you know when you have a good strong core and then helping teachers to understand what is an appropriate tier two what is appropriate for meeting needs of the students at tier two that aligns and doesn't go so far off track at a tier two so really layering up our instruction with our students at tier two and then again at tier three and then you know working alongside with our EC director and thinking about our EC students and you know being in a targeted school of improvement with those students as well you know we really had to make sure that we were aligning for those students our tier one our tier two and our tier three and so as we dug into that and we started developing that matrix we really realized that we really had to have something that teachers knew, I'm teaching this specific thing in my core, and when students are not responding, when I go to tier two, what specific thing do I have that aligns to that core at tier two? And then that also aligns to our EC students and our um, other ELs and the other students that were also trying to meet their needs. So I think that that was you know, really, we really were all over the place in what schools were doing and providing at that tier two and tier three. And so when you know we looked at data and we looked at interventions, we weren't always matching and aligning the needs and then the interventions as closely as we could be doing. And so that really helped us to develop a better plan of what we did need. And I think you made a great point there when she said layering. Um, in the past, when we had um, attempted years ago to, to do the RTI model, um, teachers had the misunderstanding that once you know a child moved to tier three, they just received that tier three instruction and tier two was no more. And to be able to close those gaps, we had to layer that core support. And if a child needed tier two, they got core plus tier two. And if a child moved to tier three, they got core tier two support and tier three support. So it has definitely helped us bridge the gap having the supplemental supports in place. And, and that has not been a fast and swift change mm -hmm. for us. That has truly been a shifting of the mindset um, for a lot of the teachers in our district who, who thought mm -hmm. that, that once they move to this, then I don't have to continue to do this. And so that's been a mind shift for a lot of our folks to realize that, okay, my job is to still supply that core and then we're going to layer that piece and then layer that next piece should they need it. So it's just that continuation of the instruction at each of those tiers, but realizing that it takes every single one of us continuing to do that in order to close those gaps and get those kids to where we need them to be. And I and guess then, in Allegheny, we've called that, we've kind of put a label on it, we say it's core plus more. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> That's just the way we operate. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, with that reality and that mind shift, it quickly became to teachers overwhelming. Yes. You know, oh my goodness, how do I do that in a 90 minute block of time? How do I do all those layers? And so that's when we really had to really streamline our core and then their supplements and what we we're doing at tier two really did need to be something that aligned so closely that a teacher was less overwhelmed and knew exactly what she was doing was going to align for that student. And so, you know, it really opened up that opportunity for us to think as a district, what can we do to minimize the overwhelming feeling of layering and, and different programs and different things and different choices and for our teachers to meet the students needs. So did an evaluation um, with central office and your teachers in choosing Dreambox actually help in that process at all? And if so, what did that look like? So I think, you know, as we started thinking about that, we actually did a pilot with Dreambox. Mm -hmm. And so we had, you know, some upfront meeting about what Dreambox did, the opportunity, but then we actually 
turned it loose with our teachers and kind of helped align it to the go map. But then we had the opportunity to, to look at it, to use it, to see what it was like, what it was going to be like, how the data was going to tell us information about our students. And so I think that, that that first step really helped us to understand how we were going to, you know, utilize Dreambox and make that choice. Well, and it helped get the teacher buy-in yes. by having them to, to pilot the program and, and, you know, really get a good understanding of what it can do for, uh, for students. So that buy-in piece was so crucial um, to uh, helping get Dreambox off the ground and going. And, and we were very intentional with that pilot and and who was doing it and piloting it for us within our district and tried to be very intentional because we knew that if, if we were intentional and took our time and, and were deliberate in what we were doing with it and the data that we were receiving from it, that we could then in turn go back and say, this is what we have from this. So it wasn't just a, hey, try this. We, we tried to be very deliberate in how we did it so that we could get that buy-in. And, and the coaches, we were there with the teachers. So we were seeing, oh, there's a placement and then beyond. So we understood how it worked and we could support the teachers as they were testing it out for our district. That buy-in is just so important. And in addition to the buy-in, I think it's really important to be able to drive something around, kick the tires and see, does it really fit with your district? Does it align with your goals and your strategic plan? Absolutely. Uh, Leanne, we often say, what gets measured gets discussed. Would you mind talking to us about how your teachers are using data from Dreambox to drive instruction in a way that they could not before? Yes, so with our Go Math adoption you know we had chapter assessments we had opportunity to differentiate but then we never had the data to go along with the skills for mathematics you know and then helping teachers understand those skill gaps and the correlation between that and their standards and mm -hmm. so you know we really coached and worked closely in monitoring the student's usage and the student's data with the teachers and then how to really understand what that data was telling us about that student's math development. And so we really use reports from um, Dreambox to kind of help us with, you know, the student may be working on Dreambox 20 minutes a day, but the student's not passing enough lessons to progress their mathematic, you know, their, their understanding and their conceptual knowledge and so that was something that we really had a shift in when we first started using Dreambox because it is different than other programs where it's an expectation of time the data from Dreambox is not an expectation of time it's an expectation of student performance and understanding that if a student's passing five to seven lessons in a week that student is going to show the growth that they need to be you know, proficient each year and to make the growth each year. And so you know, really monitoring that kind of data and helping teachers understand it was huge. And you know, helping the kids to understand it was even bigger because a lot of times with the data, we talk about it and we, we monitor the teachers. But with Dreambox, we've really helped students understand that if you pass these five lessons in three days, great job, look at that, you're really putting the effort, you're paying attention, you're focused, and so really helping the kids buy into that as well. Well, and I would jump on board with what Leanne was saying, and, you know, just to reiterate the fact that in the beginning, it was all about 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and as we have progressed mm -hmm. with it, and we've, we've gotten to understand the program and, and everything that it can do for us, even our kids realize now that, okay, I can do my five to seven lessons and they're realizing that those lessons are progressively getting a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And so they're starting to see that they are understanding more than they initially thought that they knew. So they're, they're starting to see their own progression and starting to see that, you know, it does kind of move with them. So when they've mastered it and it gets a little harder, they're not so beat down by it mm -hmm. because they understand that I've gotten this, 
this thinks I'm ready to do this. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. That's huge for kids who mm -hmm. have always just had to work like, you know, rote memorization mm -hmm. or something like that to see their conceptual knowledge build and, and it adapts with them. That's huge mm -hmm. for kids. I love how you highlighted building the student confidence and how important that is and how the students really could see their confidence grow within using the solution. But also you talked about Hattie's High Yield Effective Strategies and how students being responsible for their own goal setting and that also led to some efficacy. I, I love seeing those really important best practices play out in your district. Liam, were, I mean, uh, were you going to add anything, Melissa? I didn't know if I cut you off just then. <laughs> no, uh, Stacy just made a good point there about Dreambox being adaptive to mm -hmm. individual student needs, and that that's that's so crucial for our exceptional needs students and, and our ALS coming in. Uh, that adaptive piece is just, uh, like I said, it, it's a game changer. It's been a game changer for us. Well, and, and Melissa, also in Allegheny County. Isn't it true that you have a lot of seasonal job opportunities that attract migrant workers and their families? So what does a seamless transition look like for migrant students who are coming into and out of the county? And, and that, that's tough, Jennifer. Um, we, we do have a large influx of mi migratory families uh, each fall. They come here for agriculture. And, you know, these we're looking at families that have moved, you know, six, seven, eight times. And that, that's just a lot of transition for these kiddos. So we've got to try to provide as seamless of a transition as possible. Um, and we do that through, we have a migrant coordinator who help, helps those families get enrolled, helps them understand um, expectations, um, you know, and tries to overcome some language barriers and just be there to support them. And having um, programs, resources in place such as Dreambox that um, that can, um, you know, I guess, um, what am I trying to say here? In their native language, um, it, it helps the transition. So it helped that Dreambox had Spanish throughout oh, yeah. the entire yes. environment. Correct. And it's captioning too, so you can see it written in Spanish or English. Correct. And, and it's a simple click Correct. and change the language. There's not this, I got a call, I have to get in contact with someone, I have to justify, like we can click yes. individual students to translate into and another yes. language. And to piggyback on what they're saying, you know, like we only have, uh, and, and our migrant population, they move in and they move out. And, and so we really needed something that was gonna be efficient and effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, for those students and for all of our students, not just that population. And Dreambox allowed us to have that. So it was the efficiency that we needed within the school day, but it also gives us the effectiveness that we need to see throughout the year. And it's a, it's, it's a resource they can understand. Right. You know, the, these kiddos, I mean, it, it's tough coming in and not knowing the language, but for them to be able to, to use Dreambox and understand that that's huge for them. Well, and you know, testing for reading is postponed for a little while, but for math instruction, it never is. Mm -hmm. And it really harms children when they're not continuing to grow on grade level in a timely manner. So with your usage of Dreambox, did it help to kind of keep them on, on grade level and able to participate in maybe classroom discussions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they were seeing a lot of what their classmates were yes. seeing. You know, they're seeing very similar things. So, you know, it, it's it helps build the inclusivity and, and all of it for, for those students. And it, it really helped us um, to understand we, you know, just because they don't speak our language doesn't mean they're not on grade level. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a huge misconception. It would take, you know, sometimes three to four weeks before a teacher would really understand if that migrant student, one, had been in school enough to be close to grade level, but now with that option, you really can see, based on them being a fourth grader, how close, what skills, where are they according to fourth grade? And so it really helps us to just know the students quicker. And then a lot of these migrant students come back 
every year. We have a lot of repeat students who come in. And so then with this opportunity with Dreambox, we have to give them that same support each year when they come back to our district. And they're typically only here for about two months. Oh, so, wow. So yeah. we, we don't have time to waste with yeah. these students. Um, so she was and saying three eager. to four weeks mm -hmm. to understand. We, we don't have that much time. Yeah, we get them for about six weeks. Yes, yeah. six to eight weeks. So I've got a few questions about the students in with that. Tell me, uh, do you notice students are logging in because you said they're here for a couple of months and then they're gone. Do you notice them logging in when, they, when they're no longer in your schools or is it just that you've got that short window of time to work with the students? I don't know that we've ever kept their accounts open to see right. if they could continue right. once they leave. Because yeah. a lot of times they'll leave here and go north to Michigan yes. and other states. So, but that may be an option that we look we'll at, especially sure. for our repeat students that come back each year. That's a really good question. Thank, Thank you. you. I did, Jennifer. <laughs> Well, and I love it because you talked about how important that screen time is, that efficiency, uh, because you don't have a lot of time to waste. And so, or, so you're finding that it, using Dreambox is an efficient time of their use. But what about the students? Is it engaging? Do they like Dreambox? Oh, yeah. yes. So, yeah. just it, it, do y'all mind if yeah. I, okay. So, my own children are in school in, in our district, so both of my children use it, and it's very game-like for them. Um, you know, it's set up like a game. There are characters that they can pick from, and they can make their own little person, and they can choose what he's going to look like and what he does, but it's also adaptive to them, so it really helps our students understand that working on something different is okay. Mm -hmm. During their core instruction, they're getting the same instruction. So Dreambox allows kids to work where they naturally need to be. And so our kids understand that they don't have to be working on the same thing all the time. And that's crucial for kids because, you know, if you're in fifth grade and, and you're getting that fifth grade content and your, your classmates see that you struggle with that, you know, that can be hard for a child. So when they get on Dreambox and it naturally adapts to where they are and, and they can talk to their classmates, not necessarily about the content that they were working on, but, you know, maybe the skill that they were working on or, or what their little person did. I mean, that's huge for kids. It, it gives them that individualization and shows them it's okay. We don't have to be doing the same thing all the time. Yeah. So. Um, and just. Piggybacking on that, um, my my child is also using Dreambox, and my kindergartner is getting ready to use it. And um, he had gotten to content that he knew he had not been taught, mm -hmm. and he was upset because he said, "I'm not going to pass these lessons. I'm going to start not passing my lessons. So my teacher's going to think that I'm not listening to her instruction." I said, "But it's stuff that you've not been taught. She'll know that." She she's ready to teach that for you or you're ready to learn that now based on your data and so and he's only in third grade and he did not want to let his teacher down with his dream box lessons passed and so I really explained to him about how you know but that's for your teacher to know that's how your teacher will use your dream box to know that you're ready to do multiplication so absolutely and when I was in the classroom we always just wanted for me it was one of the primary most important baseline uh, understandings within my classroom is that we wanted students to risk it and we would chant risk it risk it risk it and one of the things that I think is so important is within a solution is that one the students the one doing the thinking not the solution not the teacher and the other thing is that the there's safety within that environment that students take a risk they're not so worried about getting it right or wrong that they feel it's safe to take that risk would, would you say that that is what might occur in Dreambox and from what you're seeing with your own children and with the students in the district? Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times in our, 
in our community, and I know it's around the, the nation, parents will say, I'm not good at math. And we will, we will have kids come in that'll say, I'm not good at math. I don't think like that, or I can't do that. And I can honestly say that my child has never said one time, I'm not good at math. And I've, I'm hearing less students just shut down and say, I'm not going to try this math or do it this way. And so I think that Dreambox has helped build that confidence of it's okay if it's not right the first time. I'm going to do it again, or it's going to show me what I missed, or it's going to tell me, or my teacher's going to tell me what I missed. And so I think it's building that comfort of, and, and losing that cultural stigma of I'm not good at math. I hope. I hope. <laughs> and then and them doing it on their own. You know, we've really tried to mm -hmm. tell tell our students, you know, this is for you to do. This is where you show us, you know, everything that you, that, that you can do. And it really we hope the end goal, like Leanne was saying, is is to move away from that I'm not good at math, but for them to see their potential with math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean that's that's a goal to we we want our kids to really see the potential that they could have not only with math but just stem related stuff well and um, that conceptual right. understanding of, right. of math and it not being you know rote memorization right. or, or drill mm -hmm. and kill and them really just moving from one standard to the next with no understanding so mm -hmm. it, it's been huge yeah and and that's that's been huge when we shut down for COVID yes, yes. and we had parents absolutely worried to death about math instruction because I don't know this new math. You know, we hear that all the time. And really when we could tell them, your child knows how to do Dreambox. They'll get feedback from their teacher. Just put them on their Dreambox. And, and that just a huge relief during the COVID, you know, shut down of parent anxiety about math. So, well, well, let's talk about that a second. How was your transition with COVID-19 since you were already using Dreambox at that time? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I would say that our usage during uh, of Dreambox during COVID, through during our shutdown, was through mm -hmm. the roof. Um, so kids were still logging on. Um, teachers were still providing that feedback. So for them, for them to be able to move into a remote instructional setting and use Dreambox as a tool, uh, it really, it was seamless. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it was, you know, and that was the big part, just the consistency and the continuity yes. of what they had been doing in the classroom. And that was one of the smoothest mm -hmm. transitions mm -hmm. that we had due to yes. the COVID-19 shutdown. And the opportunity, because we were in March, of our school year, the opportunity for us to step in as coaches and look at data with the teacher and, you know, okay, so looking at this data, this student has some gaps in fifth grade math. So before they go to sixth grade, we're going to put in those assignments and try to close those gaps before next school year. That opportunity to have it because the teachers had time to think about looking at that data, whereas if they're teaching all day, you know, it was a little more resistance, but with this, it gave us that opportunity to show them by March, you really can see where kids are and the gaps they have in your grade level. And so we use that, you know, for the, for this time of closure. So with everyone worried about the COVID slide, were you guys as worried or did you feel pretty confident going into the school year? I mean, naturally, I mean, we were, uh, yeah. you're always worried. Yes. So, and we, you know, we had those students that did nothing, right. you know, I mean, like, I'm just, yeah, be full honest. disclosure. I we had course. kids that did nothing. Right. We're, we're always worried. Um, you know, anytime you don't have eyes on your kids, you're worried about them. Um, but it's because it's a tool that they have, have been exposed to, and it's a resource that we've had coming back into school, transitioning back yes. in. You know, yeah. they're ready to pick right up. Yeah. And Did I you can know? honestly say, I can honestly say as an instructional coach, this was our first year of like coming back, the big gap. I was really nervous about there not being a new placement assessment, you know, because in my mind, I'm thinking, how is Dreambox going to really accommodate for this slide? How does that happen? But I can tell you, we, we went back in, the teachers talked about 
remember guys, you're passing lessons, you're doing your best. It, some of it may be stuff you don't remember, you know, it picked right back up. I mean, I have had teachers say, and like my own son, he's already into third grade content. And we had the summer slide, we had this time off. I mean, I'm not sure how that algorithm works, but I'm, I'm a believer now that it's going to be okay every year starting over without a placement test. So. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. We, yes. And, and and can so can we also just say that we are, and this is totally, you may or may not have a question about this, but we also wanted to just plug this in there. We are super excited about the predictive measure. Yeah that we'll be rolling out with Dreambox in the future. We, we are really, really excited about that. We think that's going to be a tremendous benefit yes. to our teachers as well as our yes. students. That opportunity to say how students are going to perform on a grade level, end of grade, end of grade assessment grade. is mm -hmm. huge. Yes. And that just puts more mm, for yes. our teacher buy-in. Yes. So it, it really just allows you to really target Yes. your students target that instruction and make your time efficient yes you know you have limited instructional time in a day we want to make that time so valuable well and with us you know with with we're on the a b schedule so we see our kids you know half the time so we really need to make sure that what we're doing is effective so if you could give advice to all the folks listening today about creating a strong implementation and a culture that's going to support your students, your teachers, and your parents, um, talk to me about that. T tell us tell us your best advice today. Melissa, do you want to start? Sure. So I'll start with just the parent piece of that. I would say I would sum that up with two words, keep in informed and communicate. Um, keep your keep your parents informed about um, you know Dreambox. Um, bring them in. Have open open house nights, um, math nights. Show them how it works so they've got a good understanding of what Dreambox is. That's mm -hmm. so important to have that parent buy in um, and communicate often. You know, as as students are progressing through the lessons, communicate mm -hmm. with parents on how they're doing or or gaps that may be present that you know just having like I said just open lines of communication and I can speak as instructional coach and thinking about supporting teachers support would be my biggest thing is you know don't just throw another like this is not another program that you're being mandated to use really support them in understanding how beneficial this is to what you are doing every day and the work that you're doing and understanding it because you know it is another resource but with that resource comes a different format and a different way and a different system and so really just having the opportunity to support them incorporate this into PLCs and talking about the data and really using this data um, and supporting teachers with the data is going to be huge in the buy-in and, and once the teachers get into it 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 sells itself if they're supported with it. And, and from the student standpoint, you know, being transparent with your students about what you're doing and, and they're gonna follow your lead. So if you walk in and you talk about it and you're like, okay guys, let's do Dreambox. You know, they're naturally gonna pick up on that. And so you don't want that. You want to celebrate your students' successes. You know, make sure you're pulling them over to talk to your kiddos about, hey, I noticed you've really shown a lot of growth here celebrate with your kids what they're doing they need mm -hmm. encouragement and they need to know they'll please you kids want mm -hmm. to please adults they want to please their teachers yeah. and we have to celebrate with them so that they feel good about themselves and want to continue to please you and want to please mm -hmm. themselves you yeah. know children inherently thrive under that kind of environment mm -hmm. So, and that's, school that's our job. The, I say school may be the only environment they're receiving that at. That's mm -hmm. our job. Celebrate that's with them, celebrate. praise them, like be yes. excited about it, be yes. excited with them. They like it, they mm -hmm. want to play it. And Dreambox has Create that environment. made that more possible yes. because they also have those little printable uh, certificates and awards. Yes. And oh man, the kids, when they get to print that off in color. And then print. haven't, do you remember yeah. when we did like um, like the competitions mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the yeah. classrooms? 
like they thrive on that stuff. Mm -hmm. So giving them the opportunity to do that, mm -hmm. yes, they like that. It sounds like you guys really created a, a growth mindset, a fun mindset in the district at looking at data from the students, the parents, to the teachers. Mm -hmm really created a lot of fun around your implementation and i love how you're talking about you know those positive phone calls you know this positive call outs to the students and it's a great opportunity especially with a student you might have discipline issues with to be able to call that parent and say i'm calling oh what did my child do now no i'm calling because he passed this level we're so proud of him gives yes. another opportunity to have those positive touches with parents as well absolutely well, Thank you guys so much for all these questions. I, I know we're kind of wanting to open it up to a little Q&A. Brian's joined us again, and he's been monitoring some of your questions in the chat box. If you have any questions now, please put them in because we want to make sure our panelists have opportunity to answer any questions you have. Brian? Yeah, thanks. So um, there are a couple of questions I'd love to ask um, that, that came in during the discussion. So. Um, how do you combat frustration versus productive struggle when students receive lessons that may be too challenging? I think Leanne probably first mentioned that, um, so would love to would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, and so there is a feature in Dreambox in the teacher section. There's reports, and it will show you like how many times a student has been um, approached with something, or how many times have they attempted to to be proficient and it gives you an actual video that what we've encouraged teachers to do is monitor that and then pull those students over and say okay so you've attempted this like two times so let's watch this video and let's talk about what it's asking you to do because what we've learned a lot of times part of the struggle is not the math it's understanding like the steps to complete it and so one thing Dreambox does is, is you as a teacher don't have to like know every single little lesson and how Dreambox is asking students to answer. It gives you that video. And so the teachers will pull students over and we kind of monitor that, you know, each week, bi-weekly, because you do want some productive struggle. I mean, Dreambox even knows like how many times or the way that a student works through the problem by how they're clicking. And so we want them to struggle, but Dreambox also gives you indicators when a child is struggling and you need to intervene. And so that opportunity to sit with the child, you're building that confidence and that understanding. And then you're also acknowledging, I'm glad you've tried this like two times. I'm very proud you've tried and you didn't, you, you didn't melt down. I didn't know, you know, and or if the child does melt down, you go to that dashboard and you look at that video with the child right then, you know, and it prompts you what you need to explain and how to explain sure. it to the child. So you're saying okay. it generates a video. So you're saying it generates a specific video lesson for the students, so the teacher doesn't have to go and grab that, and it's aligned to your standard course of study. Yes. Based on their yes. individual pathway. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I will say too, Brian, just touching on your question. I mean. I have sat down with students before on content where we both had to watch that video yes. to even understand what was going on. Yes. So for them to see an adult having to productively mm -hmm. struggle, you know, you're it's that's good for them to see as well. Like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, here's this adult, this teacher who needs to watch this video in order to help me as well. That's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, our kids need to see that we don't have all the answers that yeah. we can productively struggle. And uh, Stacy and I have, um, oh. during shutdown, our students, so our boys are in the same grade, we kept getting it wrong, yeah. <laughs> trying to help the kids. And so then we were together and we were like, what are we doing wrong? And we watched the video multiple times <laughs> before we did it right. So our kids <laughs> have to see us struggle. <laughs> and it, you know, that's good for kids yes, to see. Absolutely. They need to see adults productively sure. struggling as well. Yeah. Not everything yeah. is going to be easy for us either. For sure. Well, because we um, know that conceptual understanding equals transfer, and that's yeah. what we want. Mm -hmm. right. Great yes. point. Great point. There was another question uh, um, about supporting students that are above grade level. Um, mm -hmm. You know, can you answer that? Plus, maybe any strategies you're using for AIG. Um, that'd be great. 
So yeah, and, and this goes back to, again, just touching on that adaptive ability of Dreambox. So when our students initially, when we began, um, Leanne was talking about the placement test that our kids took. And so it naturally chooses, like it picks their pathway for them and then adjusts accordingly. So for like our AIG students, when they're on Dreambox, you know, it is going to take them above that core instruction that they're getting in their class. So it's preparing them for what they're eventually gonna see, perhaps maybe not in that grade level, but in future grade levels. And we have a couple of kids, you know, who are multiple grade levels of them. Their, their actual grade in math. And so Dreambox is gonna naturally be sort of that resource that we're gonna go to um, to help our teachers plan their instruction for those, for those students. So if we notice that that kid is ready to progress in content, then like Leanne was saying, our teachers can go in and assign lessons mm -hmm. at a higher grade level or just naturally let the, the program adapt to the students mm -hmm. itself. So it's, it's sure. been and that's an been, added resource yeah. for sure. And that's been one thing that like with advanced, you know, that's where we may align more to right. that option of assigning. So like if in seventh grade, the teacher is teaching something, she may make an assignment mm -hmm. of that grade. standard up to eighth grade. That and language. so then she's instructing that child and then giving them that dream box assignment to see if they're getting it. Cause right. you know, just because they're above grade level doesn't mean they don't still need instruction. Right. That's the whole mm. key, especially with like the MTSS component of it. Mm -hmm. It, if it's not used in conjunction with teacher instruction, yes, then it's it's not going to be as productive, mm. you know, as effective. So that's the whole part of it is aligning Dreambox to the instruction that's happening within the classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how we fundamentally. That's that was always I think our mm. end goal was it to be that added additional yes. resource that's going to support the instruction that's happening in the classroom, not mm. to be a separate resource. And that works not so well just because of the alignment right. that mm -hmm. we've got between. Mm -hmm. Got it. Let me ask a question. Um, there's two in here that kind of go together. Um, you know, this at least in North Carolina and a lot of states for MTSS require some type of diagnostic or benchmark and Dreambox is more of a continuous formative assessment and uh, not, in a, not a summative assessment first engine, right? So there's some questions in here about what do you use for your diagnostic and how do you correlate what the results from the diagnostic to um, how students may be using Dreambox to address the results of their, um, of their assessment, of their benchmarks? Sure. So I'll, I'll address the diagnostic piece and just be, you know, totally transparent. Um, we use iReady. Um, we do not use the instructional piece of that. We just use the assessment piece of that. So we get um, diagnostic results at the beginning, middle, and end of year. And then we use that iReady and look at our Dreambox results. And from there, we, we kind of correlate those. Do you guys want to talk about a little bit about what that data looks like in correlation? And so our ready, our we call it our universal screener, um, is it's a skill-based um, diagnostic, which is what we use. So it sort of looks at our kind of um, our our standards are kind of in strands, and it gives us sort of the strand breakdown of how our students are going to perform. And then our Dreambox is more of a standards-based. Mm -hmm. So that our ready diagnostic piece kind of looks at well, just the skill mm -hmm. deficits that our students have. And then we support those skill yes. deficits with our standards. Mm -hmm. So that's that layered piece that we were just talking about. We can sort of use Dreambox to fill those gaps based on the strands or the skill deficits that we see by feeling working on those particular standards, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Yeah. And again, I'll just reinforce that's where the support is so crucial for teachers because you know we had some people who because it did not just align to their standard they didn't have the buy-in initially that we were hoping for because they thought well i need something that supports me teaching fifth grade math so we really had to take our diagnostic assessment being something separate 
and then helping them to build that understanding of how if we know your child is you know, their diagnostic told us that geometry is a low area for them. We can utilize Dreambox to fill in that gap in geometry. So then when you get to fifth grade geometry and you're starting to teach your standards, those gaps have been filled. And so again, you know, I, I wasn't upset that there wasn't a diagnostic, a separate assessment because we could take that assessment that we use to help the buy-in of this pro of this um, Dreambox platform, and, and just really getting teachers to understand how filling gaps helps you you teach your standards, and just having those those extra data points mm -hmm. was a, a bonus, you mm -hmm. know, because a, one piece of data by itself does yeah not inform you of a lot. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's it's we are we like to say um, that we are data rich <laughs> <laughs> now we are finally getting to a point where we feel like we're starting to become data rich. Yes. And it, yeah. it really helps us understand our students yeah. better, our, the needs. And, you know, I think one thing you all touched on, to be data rich, it's so helpful to have consistency in programs and teaching. And during COVID, we saw a number of districts um, that perhaps over time had adopted programs maybe at the building level and hadn't experienced you know one program that would work for multiple grade levels perhaps k5 or k8 um, <clears throat> and are now seeing some of those advantages of consistent data discussions consistent professional development um, there's only you know there's not there's not a coach in every school <laughs> there's, not, there's not two coaches in every school and so leveraging that um, has been helpful um, I think that's all the questions I saw. Um, I'll just add one last comment on what you were just speaking to with diagnostic data is, uh, for those of you that use Dreambox and for those of you that don't, um, diagnostic data can be imported into Dreambox uh, using quantile data or if you use NWEA map assessment. Um, and then as Leanne and Stacy and Melissa talked about, uh, specific assignments can be provided to students based on that quantile or NWEA data. So um, while we do not have a direct diagnostic tool, we certainly leverage the data in a lot of different ways. I'm going to take about one more minute to see if there's any other questions. And I'll remind, uh, let me just flip to the next slide here. So our last, last slide wrap up. So the QR code here takes you to uh, a way to contact Dreambox if you need more information if you're a customer that needs help. If you have a specific question um, that was maybe not addressed today that you think of, certainly feel free to reach out to us. Allegheny County Schools website is listed there, and uh, these these three ladies' uh, contact information can be found there. So I'm gonna let's just take one more minute, see if anything else gets asked. Jennifer, any closing thoughts or comments from you? I just wanted to say, really, educators that have joined us today. And administrators who have joined us we know that this is a busy and a, and a difficult time for you so we really appreciate you spending time with us today to learn a little bit more um, and we just want to thank you for your sacrifices you your family's sacrifice uh, for you to teach other people's children and we just want to stop and say thank you for that great point great point okay well I'm going to close this out and I'll stay on for, you know, the last five minutes in case somebody has something. Um, but I certainly, again, just want to echo the comments from Jennifer. Um, really appreciate the time that Leanne, Stacy, Melissa, Jennifer, yourself um, have chosen to spend with us. Clearly, you're passionate about student success. And like every educator, you know, you come to work every day to help students uh, grow in life, which uh, as a parent, we all are desperately uh, appreciative of now more than ever. Uh, as we look to transition, hopefully, back into the classroom and back to normalcy. So um, I want to remind everybody, if you have, um, if you've attended or registered for this webinar, we'll be sure to send you a recording uh, in the next couple of days, hope, hopefully by the end of next week at the latest. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, um, you can scan that QR code. And if you have a question, again, for the, um, for the Allegheny County team, you can visit their website um, and, uh, and find their email addresses there. So I will stop here. Thank you again, uh, Allegheny team and Jennifer. 
great job today. Um, and for those of you that are here, we hope you found it super beneficial. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe. <laughs> Thanks.